Fab here. Today we've got some upgrades for the mongrel and probably the most important upgrade really for any track car is some proper track tyres. So I've got some Toyo R888R tyres. These are a uh, semi-slick, so road legal track tyre. And uh, Toyo sent me these for free, Toyo UK, to do a bit of a comparison against the uh, Toyo tyres that I've currently got on the car, which are a road tyre. Those are a TR1, and they've held up pretty well for a, um, a fairly cheap road tyre. Can't really complain, obviously it's the only tyre I've driven on that car, so I don't really have anything to compare it against. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how much of a difference these are going to make, so thanks Toyo, it's much appreciated. One thing that's noticeable is this, these are both a 195 tyre, but this is actually considerably wider and these have a much stiffer sidewall and they're a lot softer. If you dig your nail in, you can leave an indent in the tyre. So I'm pretty confident that's going to make a significant difference to my lap times. The poor old thing needs a good, a good clean as well. It's got all these black marks all over it, which is bits of uh, rubber. Okay, so last time I was fitting some tyres, someone mentioned about the yellow dot not being in line with the valve. Up until that point, I had, um, I had never even noticed the yellow dot on any of the tyres I've ever fitted, so I've never put a yellow dot in any specific position on the wheel, but this time I will. Okay, this is the 195.50 against a 195.45. It's slightly taller, but the most significant thing, obviously, you can see is actually the width of the uh, tire. Now that ain't coming off easy. You gotta let us soak in. It's not all easy work. Get scrubbing. I want to just like spray on hose off job. Yeah, that's why everyone wants their car wash for a fiver. You should have painted it black, you would have seen it. <sighs> We're coming off. Yeah. With a bit of elbow grease. Get the broom out.
what's this stuff? It's like spray on ceramic stuff. You wait till we rinse her off. Well, you just spray it on and rinse off. Yeah, and then you got. And then That's my kind of car wash. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't get rid of dirt. See how much water we've taken on. Oh. <laughs> Good job I got a drain hole. This looks a bit low in the back, I think. Got some grippy tyres on there, that's obviously going to make a massive difference to uh, the lap times. The next thing, which I think will improve the car, is to try and get a bit more power out of it. I think if this car had like an extra 100 horsepower, it would be an absolute weapon. I also think driving a low powered car teaches you to carry a lot more speed into corners so I'm enjoying driving it with not much power and just uh, learning to carry more momentum so then um, I can just work on my driving and improving the handling of the car um, and then once I've sort of got to the point where I've, I'm happy with everything else then you know I can look at doing an engine swap or you know increasing the power significantly but for now um, if you watch the dyno video of the car it sort of flattens off at about 5000 rpm it makes fairly good torque so if you look up here it makes 120 horsepower this is uh, this must be rear wheel horsepower because that's what it made it was 122 at the rear wheels and then you can see it's actually starting to drop at like 6.2, starting to drop off. And obviously on track, I'm driving it like quite high up in the rev range. Doesn't have the power to really short shift and um, you know, use the torque. And on the straights, I'm struggling to get much over 100 mile an hour. So I've been speaking to a chap who has a rolling road and he said he'd be interested in experimenting with different lengths of trumpets on the uh, throttle bodies because he thinks that there's potentially a lot more to be had out of this. So I think if we could move, move it all up so that it was making its peak power near the top of the rev range, I think it would make the car a lot faster and I think because that's where I'm driving it. So, so the plan is, I'm going to cut these runners down the middle and then I'm going to make a load of different lengths of sleeves of some sort, probably just be like silicon uh, hose, of a few different lengths to the max that I can bring this out, obviously it's going to hit there, so whatever the distance of that is, I'm going to go as far as I possibly can in a few steps and then we're going to run it on the dyno with all different lengths of, uh, of inlet runner and um, see, see what we can get out of it. I think it'll be quite an interesting experiment as well to see how it, uh, how it affects it. And then once I've got the, 
you know, the correct length that I want to use, I can then remake these or do a more permanent, um, do a more permanent fix of, uh, you know, correcting that length. So we should have another dyno video coming up shortly. I know everyone loves a dyno video. So I'm going to be back on track in about 10 days. So I'm looking forward to that. And if you've got any predictions for the inlet runner length experiment, then um, stick them in the comments. I'm sure it'll make a, an interesting discussion. That's going to be it for this one. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.